Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Thursday, March 29th, 2018. This is the 50th episode. Episode 50. Yay! Wow. Episode 50. 50 episodes of headlines you may have missed already. Oh, how time flies. It doesn't really fly. There's tons of stuff that's happened in my life since episode one. So you give us 20 minutes and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. We'll give you headlines of action, hope, and awareness. And yes, maybe a little lulls. Now today we are going to start with the awareness headline and you'll understand why I, I think. You can get show notes at istake.tv slash H050, which is linked in the video description for both the YouTube and the uh, Facebook versions. Today's show is titled, First They Take Your Guns, Then They Take Your Kids. On today's episode of Headlines You May Have Missed, Macron's Mandate, Catalan Defiance, Charging on the Go, West Virginia's 2A Leash Extension, and more. And if you're watching on Facebook, don't forget to stay tuned in because I will respond to the comments after the YouTube part of the show is over. And remember, comments are like crack to me, so keep the crack coming. Keep my crack addiction going. That's the only decent thing to do. And now... Ladies and gentlemen, here are your 20 min minutes of headlines you may have missed. With edict, French president changes Gov school age start to three years old. That's right. If you live in France... Manuel Macron, the current president of France, with a simple edict, has has changed. Well, I mean, fundamentally changed your society in <laughs> in a really easy way. So it seems the the state wants to make sure that your child is really their child. At least the the state of France does. With just a word from the imperial fay lad called Emmanuel Macron, the gentle one, the kind one, the current president of France, the mandatory age that you send your child off to government indoctrination centers. Uh, by the way, that's schools to the normies out there. Is now the ripe old age of three, 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 three. Three years old. That's right. When your child turns three years old, it's time for them to move on. In their grand benevolence, the state of France has decided to allow the parents it controls to raise their child as they see fit. Uh, I really wanted a long pause there, but I was like, I can't have uh, like a too long a moment of silence because people will just tune out when they hear silence so I, I replaced it with uh, I'm going to go through that again because I think this is worth the whole dramatic effect. Bear with me here folks. This is the only time I get to act out my histrionics on such a grand scale. In their grand benevolence the state of France has decided to allow the parents it controls to raise their child Pause, 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 pause. As they see fit for the first three years of life. That's right. They give you three years. Three years, folks. But that's long enough for any independence for parents and kids in France. So now, after your child turns three years old, it's time for you to send the child off to your nearest government indoctrination center. And again, for you normies out there, that means school, public school, government school, government indoctrination center, to assure that your child becomes the right and proper type of cog the state needs to fit into its benevolent cog-serving machine. Now, just take it in the weirdness of that sentence and 
you know, the, 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 the cog serving machine is comprised of cogs. So I'm, you know, like you, you, you try and figure out what I'm, what I'm really saying there. I don't think it's too subtle. Now, the title of the show, though, is first they take your guns, then they take your kids. And you may be thinking to yourself, what the, what the frick are you talking about, man? I mean, are you kidding me? This is just a story about, uh, you know, just uh, so they're changing the mandatory age from six to three. No big deal, you know? Well, it, mostly the folks in my audience probably get how that's a really big deal. How it is a really big deal with the word from one person. Uh, what's the population of France? It's, uh, you know what? I'm going to check that. I want to see. I want to make sure I get this right. I'm, and you can see me as I do my uh, Insta, sir, Insta research. I thought it was 70 million, but I was closing up. It's 66.9 million. 66.9 million people in France. And one guy, one little megalomaniacal, egocentric, sociopathic, gentle lad stands forward and says, you know what? Let's fundamentally change society. Let's move the mandatory age from, from six to three. And with just the word, that's done. Now, where's the gun part come into play? Well, it's worth noting that France has extreme anti-gun laws. Uh, so Macron, he is fully aware that his decision to change the age that you must send your child to a government indoctrination center from, from six to three, it, it won't be met with armed resistance as most of the French are without effective arms. And I'm not saying that there aren't probably plenty of French who have arms that they shouldn't have, but, but most of them are without effective arms. And the only people who have any effective arms would be the very wealthy. Yet, you know what? They're probably going to be exempt from this law because they send their kids to private schools and, yeah, they got stuff. Uh, the government goons themselves uh, and, of course, the criminals and the terrorists just as the state prefers it. I mean, it's it's great for the state if people can't defend themselves and every once in a while somebody shoots up a bunch of people or whatever because, you know, it gets fear and fear begs, you know, produces people begging for more security so the government can continue to extend its power over the people. And now, now, now let's look at the ABC news, ver news version of this story. Starting next year, France will make it compulsory for children to attend school starting at the age of three years old instead of the current age of six, French President Emmanuel Macron said Tuesday. Macron said the change, which will come into effect in September 2019. Oh, they give you stuff. See, they don't do it right away. That way you're thinking, well, you know, it's not happening right now. You get used to the idea, you know, and then... Yeah, I mean, if they did it immediately, they might get some pushback. But since they're putting it off so far in the distant future, uh, yeah, people are like, oh, okay, well, it doesn't take an effect yet. I still have time. While some may have voiced support for the decision, saying that by reducing the age to three, it will help their children feel more accepted in society. Others are worried. Just who are the people? Who are the, who are the idiots who, who are actually saying that sending your kids to government school will make them feel more accepted in society. And why does accepted in society, why, why is that a thing that you really want for your kids? I'm not saying it's bad to be accepted in society, but I don't know necessarily if that is your primary goal in life to be accepted in society, that you're going to be a very uh, independent, free-thinking person. Well, I do understand the president's viewpoint. I suggest that, in fact, it is the parents' role in teaching their children about tolerance and acceptance of others in society. Yeah, yeah, I kind of agree about that. Kind of. An official at the French Ministry of Education in Paris and a former teacher himself told ABC News, Oh, an un unnamed person. Ain't stupid. Ain't even stupid. I feel that the change could put additional strain on support for teachers and mean that we are placing too much pressure on our children. Nothing about the fact that the government is taking more complete 
control over the lives of individuals through this move. Nothing at all. Nothing about the fact that uh, with a simple edict, a man can fundamentally change a society. One individual, one human being who got an idea in his head and decided, I'm going to go ahead and make a change that affects 67 million people. 67 million largely unarmed uh, I would say sufficiently uh, domesticated sheeple. Catalan Parliament votes to re-elect imprisoned ex-president Carle Puigdemont. I love this story. I don't love what's happening there in Catalonia, but I love this this move. And this is actually the the action headline of the day. So if you go to iState.tv, this is the, the the story that's on the top. The action story. This is an example of people fundamentally taking action to oppose liberty encroaching trolls. So it seems no matter what the goose-stepping trolls of Madrid attempt to do to frighten Catalonia, the independence movement refuses to die. After the arrest of Puigdemont by the fascist enabling Germans, the Parliament of Catalonia carried through with a vote on a resolution that affirmed the right of Carle Puigdemont to be re-elected as the president of Catalonia, given that the majority of them have already indicated indicated their preference to re-elect him, this is kind of a de facto re-election vote. The continued strong arming by Madrid is only leading to a deeper, wider resistance to its rule by force practices. And this is from ABC News. Catalonia's parliament passed a symbolic motion Wednesday affirming the right of the Spanish region's former separatist, yes. listen to that language, former separatist leader. No, just call him former president of Catalonia. Just do that. Why don't you? Clearly we know where ABC News, uh, where their preferences align, and it's it's not on the side of liberty. Uh, Carla Puigdemont to be reelected to his old job, even though he is in jail facing a possible trial even though he has been taken political prisoner by the German allies to the Madrid fascists. You know, it's really easy to write this in an honest way, ABC. Stop trying to uh, sanitize tyranny. Pro-independence parties use their slim majority to approve the motion and continue their defiance of the Spanish government, which says the wealthy northeastern region cannot secede and that no candidate facing legal, legal troubles that they created, you know, the, the old fascist uh, tyrannical standby, accuse them of uh, inciting people to violence and also of treason. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to move on. Wireless charging on the go for your electric vehicle. And this is the hope headline for today. This is, this is a really cool story. And, and it's actually a lot of times you read tech stories and they're glowingly optimistic and you kind of have to pick through things, especially future tech type stories. And I've been looking at a lot of them, so I'm starting to get this trend. But here, this article written by Tina Casey for Clean Technica was refresh, refreshingly honest. And it's also really, she, she wrote it in a very funny, uh, very clever way. I really, I really enjoyed her writing. Uh, anyway, in the article, uh, the idea of a wireless charging electric vehicle is explored. So while strides have been made, especially in wireless charging for parked EVs, there's still some hurdles to be overcome, but the dream lives. And I, and again, I, I really strongly recommend you click on the read more link to take in the full article. If you go to the show notes and you get to, to, to our article here. So she writes here, wireless EV charging on the go is looking more real than ever before. That's right. You're charging as you drive or better yet while your car is driving you. Come to think of it, mash up wireless EV charging on the go with self-driving cars and you have, well, a really long ride ahead of you. The latest electric vehicle development comes from the University of Colorado at Boulder. Here's what assistant professor Coram Afridi and the other researchers have been up to. Over the last two years, Afridi and his colleagues have developed a proof of concept for wireless power transfer that transfers electrical energy through electric fields at very high frequencies. Okay, so far good. 
proof of concept. Apparently, we're not holding our breaths for that new self-driving Tesla Model, something that costs less than a Yugo and charges wirelessly while it ferries you around. However, we're getting close. Charging pads for electric vehicles are already a thing, and the U.S. Department of Energy is eyeballing widespread use of charging pads for cars in about 10 years or so. The future is now, people. And now, well, oh, here's a little... Here's a little longer leash item for you. West Virginia passes law protecting right to bear arms. That's a short version because I couldn't, in a headline, express exactly what happened there because the headline would turn into an article. Uh, either that or I'm just not clever enough to figure out how to make it a, a short article. From our longer leash files comes news out of West Virginia. It seems the governor of West Virginia, Jim Justice, has signed legislation that will prevent businesses from preventing their employees from storing their firearms in their cars, even if the cars are parked in the business-owned parking lots. And the reasoning is simple. If you prevent your employees from storing their firearms in their cars in your parking lot, you all but prevent them from being able to carry firearms to and from work. And now, ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourselves, for this is... Your daily laws, and for the for the sensitive out there, for the for the for the right and proper sensitive folks out there, you may want to avert your gaze, put your fingers in your ears, put your definitely put your uh, hands over your eyes because there's a part of this that you're gonna. It's a visual involved, and you know, don't shoot the messenger here. Get a rise from South Korea's penis park. Not every day. That you write stories and you get to write a story which you can then use on a show so that you can then say what you have written. Penis part. Five minutes. I'm not immature. I'm just immature. At the recent Winter Olympics, there were many sights and sounds to take in. Sights and sounds that went beyond the actual events being staged. The Olympics were held in uh, Pyongyang, South Korea. And there were... There were many historic places to visit, visit. There were exotic restaurants. There were scenic views. But nothing could quite get you up in the morning like South Korea's famed Penis Park. That's right. I didn't stutter. I'm talking penises, and I'm talking parks, and I'm putting them together into Penis Park. The park is in the port of Sinan, Sinam, which features a penis-shaped lighthouse. The polite version of the park is uh, Haesing Dang Park, which, I don't know, maybe Haesing Dang means penis in Korean. I don't know. But we're just going to go with Penis Park, since that's what everyone else is calling it. It seems the park was a major draw during the Winter Olympics, with many international visitors and even athletes taking the time to ponder the erect homages to male fertility. And that's penises to you and me. Now, this story is a couple of months old, but somehow I miss it. Or I missed it, and, uh, you know, I, I shan't abide letting a good penis story go by. However, so that's why you're getting this story again, because let the penis story rise once again. And here's just a little... Little little visual aspect of this story for you. There you go. And there it is. That's a real thing. This is all real. And I'm bringing it to you, folks. I'm doing this. I did this to you. This is entirely my my fault. There they are. There they are. There they are. It's a real place. Don't shoot the messenger. I said penis. I said it. I'm going to say it again because this is a story about penises. You're welcome. You're welcome. There you go. That was your daily lulls. New understanding of protein could create new antibacteria. Scientists working to understand the nature of wall-building proteins in bacteria believe that their discoveries will lead to the creation of more effective lines of antibacterial therapies. 
uh, and uh, the, the wall that surrounds bacteria to shield them from external assault has long been Two a minutes. tantalizing target for drug therapies. Indeed, some of modern medicine's most reliable antibiotics disarm harmful bacteria by disrupting the proteins that build their protective armor. For decades, scientists knew of only wall of only one wall-making protein family. Then, in 2016, a team of Harvard medical scientists discovered that a previously unsuspected family of proteins that regulate cell divisions and cell shapes have a secret skill building bacterial walls. Now, in another scientific first, described March 28th, in Nature, members of the same uh, in Nature members, oh, in Nature. Members of the same research team have revealed the molecular building blocks and a structural weak spot of a key member of that finding or of that family. Our, fa our latest findings reveal the molecular structure of RODA and identify targetable spots where new antibacterial drugs could bind and subvert its work. One Italian. Minute. Italian company developing 3D printed electric bike. An Italian manufacturer, Ener Ener Energica, is developing a 3D printed electric bike that is street legal. The name of the bike is the Ego. Power suits that literally create power. What if you could wear clothing that can create energy? That's what researchers at Chalmers, Chalmers University of Technology are working on. Clothing that generates energy from your body motion. Robots swim with the fishes, literally. Sophie is swimming with the fishes. No, Sophie is not dead. Sophie is a robot. Sophie is a robot that swims like fish. Now, Sophie is swimming with the fishes. Scientists have unveiled Sophie, a soft robotic fish that can Ten independently seconds. swim alongside real fish in the ocean. And finally, wiring your greenhouse for IoT optimization. Aronet is an IoT program that allows greenhouse farmers to maximize their greenhouse, monitor them, and tweak their settings to get the best results possible. Whew. I kind of squeezed that last one in. I had another story, and I didn't get to that. And that's just too bad. Because you guys know, you know I'm an absolutarian. When it comes to that twenty freaking minutes, and I don't think that's going to change in the new when when I when I come back from my hiatus after after next week. I don't think that's going to change. I think I'm I'm going to keep it to that uh, that absolutarian twenty minutes. You're done. That's it. That's all we have for today. Uh, for today's headlines, you may have missed. And if you'd like to read more about the stories we cover today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for. March 29th, 2018, or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video. You can also go to iState.tv slash H O five O because this is the 50th episode. You can also find our audio podcast on uh, iTunes and Stitcher by searching for Ice Day. Usually, after I get it posted up, it usually shows up about two or three hours from the time I post it up. If you're watching on YouTube, you missed the opening of the show, and you'll also miss the very end, which you can only hear if you watch live on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon. Look for the guy with the AR-15, the one that he lost in a boating accident. Don't forget... To join me tonight on Is Daily Thursday with Lou Sander at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Liberty Principal Facebook page. The page is linked in the video description. Tonight's show is entitled uh, uh, "The, the uh, Scared Straight is Fake News. I almost forgot because I actually didn't write. Usually I have it written in my little script thing here, and I didn't do that. But I remember Scared Straight is fake news. That's the title for tonight's show. As always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Until tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Actually, until, um, gee, not next week. Um, maybe, is it April 9th, I guess? Until April 9th at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying... Have a great rest of your day, fellow I-Staters.